Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Dennis Rothmel, uh, Head of Product Management for AWS Directory Service. Yeah, I'm Vladimir Provorov. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect and Product Management Team. Uh, and here today, we're here to talk to you about AWS Managed Microsoft AD and how we help enterprise customers with identity on, uh, in AWS. So uh, first, we'll talk through a couple of key points. You know, what does Active Directory mean for customers today? Um, what, how's it relevant to them, et cetera? And then how does AWS Directory Service help uh, enterprise customers or customers with Active Directory dependencies with their journey to the cloud? Uh, after that, we have a pre-announcement of a new capability with AWS Managed Microsoft AD that we'll be happy to talk to you about today uh, to help you support your hybrid or multi-cloud needs. And lastly, we'll talk about how we take Active Directory, help you move it to the cloud, and make it part of the cloud with cloud-native directory uh, management capabilities. Uh, well, first things first, I think uh, customers have invested significantly in Active Directory and on-premise, uh, you know, in their data centers over the years, and moving that that investment to the cloud is non-trivial for a lot of customers. That's why you'll see popular quotes like Andy Jassy's here where large majorities of people's IT spend is still on premise because the act of moving to the cloud takes a bit of investment, takes a bit of planning, can be disruptive. And anything that you know, can help with that, make it less disruptive, is what customers are looking for support on. So when we talk to customers in directory service about some of the challenges that they face when moving to the cloud, first and foremost, the ones that have done Active Directory migrations in the past of any kind will tell me the same things every time. It's complex, it can be disruptive to my end users and to my business. It's very time consuming and it can be costly. And at the end, I'm left with what I already had before I migrated largely. Um, so that can be something that doesn't necessarily always get prioritized. Uh, you know, funding for that can be difficult, et cetera. So anything that customers can find that can help you know, reduce or lower those barriers for them uh, is a benefit when it comes to moving to the cloud, modernizing away from Active Directory, and et cetera. Um, second, when moving to the cloud, all of the access to applications, workloads, resources, from endpoints you know, to the network, all needs to be preserved. So when setting up Active Directory in the cloud, as well as maintaining one on premise and linking those environments together and then moving workloads, there can't be disruption to end users' access to the applications that they need to do their daily job. Uh, so preserving that access is critical to having a successful move from on-prem to the cloud. And lastly, moving from Active Directory A to Active Directory B pushes you to have to do a name change to your environment, which a name change might sound a little bit trivial, but then it's every application link, every DNS, you know, full DNS name changes. And then that can be impactful to end users, service to service interactions, even just to the IT admins. Uh, you know, hey, when did user X migrate to environment B? So which environment do I admin them in uh, when I need to give them access to a new application or a different you know, resource or shared folder? So all these challenges are, are things that people have to kind of plan for, schedule around, invest time and energy in smoothing over these, these hurdles and these road bumps for their end users. And so how does AWS Directory Service help customers with this journey uh, to the cloud? Yeah, so uh, what we've heard about uh, Active Directory migrations uh, and uh, enterprise migrations to the cloud uh, is uh, that uh, there is no one size fits all uh, migration path for the customers. It all depends on uh, customer needs, customer existence, applications and workloads, and uh, existing infrastructures that they built uh, on premises. Some customers just want to connect to AWS Cloud and use uh, some, some cloud applications like Amazon Q for business or just log into their AWS accounts. Some customers want to move their specific applications or workloads uh, into EC2 infrastructure and run them to the, in the cloud. And uh, some customers uh, are ready uh, and seek, uh, actively seeking for modernizing the whole infrastructure to become cloud native. In directory service, we have uh, two sub-services that uh, help us, uh, help, so helps our customers to manage uh, these needs. So we have AD Connector, which actually uh, acts like uh, identity proxy. It forwards all requ out notification requests uh, from the cloud applications uh, uh, to on-premises AD and uh, doesn't cache or store any information uh, about uh, 
these requests. So uh, it's an easy way how to connect existing users from your Active Directory to AWS applications. And uh, we have AWS Managed Microsoft ID, which is our primary topic today. Uh, that actually deploys a new domain, uh, so new Active Directory domain in the cloud, and allows you to, uh, uh, in, in addition to connection to applications and AWS accounts, it allows you to deploy uh, EC2 instances and databases uh, into these domains. So let's dive deep. What is uh, AWS Managed Microsoft AD? So it's a single tenant directory that we deploy in the cloud. So we don't share any infrastructure components, any EC2 instances uh, across uh, our uh, different customers. So it's deployed just for you. Uh, we deploy it in uh, multiple availability zones uh, to provide uh, protection from any problems with uh, cloud infrastructure uh, and reduce uh, any risks caused by that. Uh, by default, it deployed with two domain controllers, but you can scale it out and deploy additional domain controllers for more um, uh, heavily load environment. And uh, it supports multi-region deployment, so you can extend it to be closer to your users, to your workloads, uh, to provide uh, uh, really cloud-scale infrastructure for your enterprise. We uh, put a lot of effort to make uh, this directory secure by default uh, and uh, ready to be compliant with uh, PCI DSS uh, and HIPAA and other industry and government regulations. And uh, typical deployment uh, looks like uh, our customers de uh, have deployed uh, directories, uh, so managed ID in the cloud, created trust between their on-premises infrastructure and uh, managed ID domain, and use it to access AWS applications and deploy uh, new cloud services. Customers really like this uh, pattern because uh, it's easy to create uh, some isolated environment for running applications, uh, for deploying um, some test uh, scenarios for developers, and uh, for limiting uh, blast radius uh, to actually contain uh, their cloud workloads into these protected environments. Yeah, so customers are really happy with the way Managed AD works today in that you, know, you have the ability to deploy workloads in the cloud using all AWS native constructs. So API calls you know, directly from consoles of integrated apps. You can select the Managed AD and it will automatically domain join, automatically be AD aware, and you can leverage those AD identities immediately within your RDS database server, whether it be an RDS Oracle, Microsoft SQL, pick your favorite engine. Uh, or an Amazon FSx, so if you're you know, dehydrating a local file server that you own or a NetApp file or something like that and moving it into the cloud, you can do that while preserving all your you know, AD-related ACLs simply by selecting the directory and, and deploying it automatically. And even the owner of, say, FSx or RDS doesn't need to have deep permissions to your Active Directory in order to do this integration. It's all done natively at the AWS layer. And that's really great for many customers. Um, so you know, as we worked with customers over time, they said, hey, you know what? I love everything Managed AD is doing for me. The blast radius, like the, the AWS control plane level access to Active Directory, all these things are very powerful for me. The ability for me to delegate AD access to an application owner in a different AWS account while maintaining that they don't have direct access to AD, it's very powerful. Now, can you help me and let me bring my existing AD into Managed AD? And so today, we're actually really delighted to announce, uh, after the team's hard work, that we will, we, we will be supporting existing self-managed ADs and extending them with AWS Managed Microsoft AD. So what this means in this scenario is previously, today, you can go into the console and deploy a net new, brand new Active Directory, connect it to your existing directory with a trust. With this new uh, addition of, of Managed Microsoft AD, you'll be able to instead assess and extend your existing Active Directory with AWS providing you the servers monitoring, management, replacement, all the same things that we do for our managed AD directories, but for your domain controllers in AWS, we'll do that for you. So this means you know, when you tell us what VPC and what availability zones you want to be in, we'll deploy them. When you need to scale out, like Vladimir mentioned earlier, you tell us how many domain controllers, we will add them. When you need to add additional regions, you select the region, we'll deploy and let you extend and et cetera. All the same capabilities you're familiar with with managed Microsoft AD will be available now with your existing Active Directory. So now if you're you know, running AD still in your data center, you maybe even have it running on virtual machines and other clouds, 
you'll be able to simply extend that AD directly into AWS and get all of our deep application integrations automatically. So your existing Active Directory, but with EC2 seamless domain join into that Active Directory. Uh, with RDS databases, you can now lift and shift a Microsoft SQL database from a self-managed Microsoft SQL server directly into an RDS SQL server. All the access control lists in that database are the same. It's the same SID, the same GUI, the same security identifier of user or group A in your existing AD, and we're just providing you additional servers here in AWS. Um, customers really like what we do with Manage AD, and they said, could you please help me out with my existing AD operations, and this capability will help customers with that. What is also important is that uh, you preserve all your existing domain admins credentials, so you continue to manage uh, your directory, you continue to manage your on-premises or uh, domain controllers deployed in other cloud providers. So you, you keep control under, uh, over this infrastructure, but uh, we just provide you uh, all the integration with AWS Cloud and ability to manage AWS part of this infrastructure. So it's, it's kind of shared, uh, shared responsibility model <laughs> between you and, and us. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think customers were looking for the automated capabilities we have for managing Active Directory, and we're pleased to bring that to their existing directories today. And then across both your managed AD, you know, fully managed directories today, and as well as your like hybrid managed directories in the future, like I mentioned earlier, you can then take that directory that you've deployed in a single AWS account and share it across multiple accounts. So again, what this lets you do is say, application team comes to you and says, hey, I, I have an AWS account, and that application that I'm putting in there needs access to Active Directory. With the sharing feature, you can simply enable a kind of object that represents your directory in a different AWS account. And then they can do all those same seamless domain joins, all those same application integrations that I mentioned earlier, but across a separate account. So if you're you know, implementing a multi-account strategy and you're working with a team of application owners and each one has an, has an uh, account as their boundary, um, you'll be able to just you know, simply enable AD access on a per application account owner basis. Uh, that way, again, you don't have to give them direct access to AD. They can use the AWS native construct. Um, you can even use some of our cloud native management tools to automate a lot of these capabilities. Um, and so, Vladimir, why don't you talk about how we uh, help yeah. customers make AD a part of the cloud? Yeah, so um, migration to the cloud is uh, actually the first step uh, into the, uh, in this journey. Uh, after that, uh, customers uh, have questions about how to manage uh, this Active Directory, how to make it uh, a kind of cloud-native service, uh, how to integrate it into existing AWS uh, cloud operations and uh, best practices. So we built uh, integrations with uh, all important uh, security and operation services. Uh, so you can see your uh, managed AD uh, and hybrid managed AD integrated with CloudTrail. So all your administrative tasks uh, by managing this uh, Active Directory instance will be uh, logged. We also stream all security and performance logs uh, from uh, performance metrics uh, from domain controllers uh, into CloudWatch logs. So we can uh, integrate it easily with uh, any uh, actions or uh, security systems uh, so that can be triggered by these events. Or, for example, you can make a decision to deploy additional domain controllers if you uh, see high CPU utilizations on your existing domain, contro uh, domain controllers. We also made an integration with uh, AWS Privacy so we can issue certificates uh, for your Active Directory infrastructure uh, from uh, AWS Privacy without need to deploy additional PKI uh, servers. And um, uh, you can use uh, AWS Systems Manager, Fleet Manager to log into Windows EC2 instances uh, with uh, Active Directory credentials. So all of that makes uh, this directory really a cloud, uh, integrated cloud like a cloud-native service for you. And also, we integrated it with uh, AWS tools and SDKs and APIs. So you can um, manage your users, manage your groups uh, uh, in this Active Directory by using standard AWS API or CLI tools. So you can make it a part of uh, deployment of your test environments or integrate it into, into your DevOps processes. And also, we deployed uh, managing users and groups just in AWS Management Console. So uh, if you are a developer and you need to deploy 
just a test uh, Active Directory for your uh, application. You don't uh, need to become an AD admin. You can just deploy it, you can just create a few users and uh, test your applications using that. So uh, that actually makes it easier uh, for integration with existing enterprise identity management processes or integration with HR systems and uh, any uh, identity lifecycle management tools. Yeah, and just to make things a little bit simpler, because of the fact these are all AWS native APIs, you no longer need to you know, build a AD domain join Windows instance, remote into that instance, start running PowerShell commands, or open up the manual kind of uh, out-of-the-box admin toolkit to create users groups, manipulate them, et cetera. With this, you can pick any language you like, you know, Python, et cetera, and our SDK automatically respects all that, right? So you don't have to become a PowerShell, you know, code author in order to be able to use this stuff. And you can also use it to uh, manage objects across a trust. So a common example is customers, you know, implement managed AD connected to another AD. They create groups in our managed AD and they, they plug in their workloads to it, but they need to grab human users from a different Active Directory and put them in the groups they just created. You can do all that you know, now via CLI, you can do it now automated, a Lambda functions triggered off of cloud, cloud watch events and stuff like that. So, um, so it's really powerful and, and customers really happy with that. So uh, look, with that, you know, we've been Directory Service. You all have been awesome. Uh, thank you very much for your time and your attention. And we'll be over here for questions if anyone has anyone. Uh, thanks again. Thank you.